This is the third video looking at how to use the VAT Direct service from Cirrostratus Exedra to run open banking to extract information from bank accounts in order to put it into accounts or whatever. Now, the way Cirrostratus Exedra works, the VAT Direct service, is that an account has a number of legal entities. A legal entity can be a limited company or an individual or a partnership or an LLP. It has a legal personality and what's significant from making tax digital is it has a tax return to be submitted. So you can use MTD to submit a tax return for a legal entity. And each legal entity has a separate legal entity number here and we have a look at some experimental legal entities um, on this page here and it could be for instance that a firm of accountants has an account on here with a number of legal entities and their clients can access the information for their only their own legal entities and can then use that to submit the bank statements so that the client authorizes the accountant to look up the bank information for their bank account so that they don't have to keep on sending them bank statements which is an efficient way of doing things. So here's a list of legal entities. And on this page, we have a cash book. And the cash book can be used for keeping cash accounting, cash tax accounting, and submitting that to HMRC, either as a VAT return or various of the standard um, self-assessment returns. It's a uh, returns here. It is also the interface you can use to extract bank statements. Um, the system operates by analyzing the transactions from a bank statement by each month, but also the transactions since you last processed transactions. So for instance, if you want to do this once a week, you can extract all the bank li lines of entry that have happened over the last week and then put those into Excel or the cash book. Or you can do it for a fortnight or you can do it every so often. Um, so if we click on the button up here which says load bank statements the system then looks and sees what bank statements have we got that have come in since we last extracted anything. I'm going to repeat doing some of these. So we're going to take this one from Revolut, we're going to take this one from Monzo here, and we're going to take this one from APS Financial. Uh, Cash Plus is APS Financial. And we'll say, OK, let's get those transactions and let's put them into the cash book. So here we have those in the cash book. And you can see what's happening here. Um, we, we have a, a line and then an extra line. Um, this was to start up the bank account. So on that extra line there, we can type in extra information. Uh, if we see this column here, this says which account it's come from and if we weren't hiding the account details it have the last two digits of the account number so if you've got more than one account number for a particular legal entity um, with a particular institution you'd have the account digits to show which one it is um, then we obviously have the amount of the receipts or payments and here we have the balance for that account and what the system does is it tracks the balance for each of these ledger codes here. So you can also do cash in it as well, but obviously you can't get the cash from open banking. Um, and that gives you that information. And we have the code here. So if we were to say, for instance, this card setup fee was admin, like that, it would then assume there's VAT on it, which obviously there isn't if it's a bank. Um, and then we would have all the information to go off to do the VAT return. So in for instance, fact, if we look up there, you see you get the 4.96 and the 99 pence that has been analyzed from that payment here, 5.95, um, etc., etc. And obviously all of this does all the different types of analysis for um, income tax and VAT, including complexities like MOT certificates and the like, and it's being used by hundreds of people to do so. Um, so that gives you that information. Now, similarly, we could extract the bank statements and we'll pick the same ones Mon uh, Revolut here Monzo and 
cash plus and we'll get those transactions and we'll put those in the clipboard and then we'll go into Excel and then we'll copy them in this one I did earlier um, and again we've got the same information now we're doing it with a line in between but we could if we wanted to um, go back into the cash book and go into load bank statements and we could say we want Revolute ding 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 uh, Monzo and cash plus here and we'll get the transactions and then we'll click this button here to get rid of the extra line put that into the clipboard go back into excel and type it in here and then we get them line after line the reason it defaults to doing an extra line particularly for the cash book is so that you can keep the bank statement entry itself exactly as it comes from the bank statement and you can then type any extra commentary down on the next line so it's for instance if you want to annotate your month's credit card receipts you can download the credit card receipts every week just the extra ones for that week and type in what actually the receipt is so you keep keep an up-to-date record by the month not by the accounting period of the credit card company or bank or whatever it may be so it's it it enables monthly accounting obviously if you're using the system for doing income tax and VAT returns you want to do accounts to the end of the month because actually self-employed people can do the accounts to the end of March and HMRC will treat that as if that's the financial year which is quite a useful facility so the 31st of March the 1st of April the 2nd of April 3rd of April and the 4th of April are all treated from a financial point of view and tax point of view as being ending the year on the 5th you know for the 5th of April the end of the tax year so that gives an idea of how bank information can be downloaded from using um, open banking either into the cash book and then used to submit tax returns or into Excel and then taken from Excel into any other accounting system um, as you've seen from the other videos we have interfaces into at least 50 banks um, and we do expect to be able to do all of them all of those that have an open banking interface not all banks have an open banking interface we definitely do the majority of bank accounts at the moment that is obviously because we do some of the bigger banks that covers the bank accounts but there are some of the smaller banks that we don't have interfaces it working to in the moment but if you have an account with one of the smaller blanks do contact us because i'm sure we can sort it all out so i hope you found that a useful introduction into open banking